The M24 Chaffee, officially the light tank M24, it was one of America's best tank designs of World War II. 4,731 Chaffees were built from April of 1944 to August of 1945. Unfortunately, it was introduced too late in the war to see significant action, though the benefit of that was many survived to be given away or sold to other nations. With many surviving today, Chaffees have worked their way into a great number of movies, domestic and foreign. So let's take a look at why the Chaffee was an excellent light tank and highlight a few of the productions it's been featured in. <laughs> Drop dead. Pull it forward, you idiot! The M24 Chaffee was a well-liked tank in late World War II, though by the Korean War it was consistently outgunned and largely became a forgotten tank of World War II in Korea. Being less known was a benefit to producers, however, as the Chaffee had been dressed up time and time again as German armor in numerous movies. The British, French, and Danes, just to name a few European nations, used this tank, as did their filmmakers. In the Danish-American film Reptilicus, you can see a Danish Chaffee in action against the monster. And of course we can't forget the Chaffee's many battles with Godzilla. The Chaffee was featured in the 1954 Godzilla classic and several sequels. The Japanese Defense Force used Chaffee's up until 1974. And it was French filmmakers who likely used the Chaffee more than any other foreign producers. The French army received M24s after World War II and use them in the French Indochina campaign and Algeria. Watch out! They're going to shoot at us! But apart from being a good tank to play dress up and fight monsters, the Chaffee performed well in its limited engagements of World War II. Produced by Cadillac, the Chaffee was considered America's best light tank. The Chaffee left no room for error in its late war design. It was to be shipped across the ocean and put immediately into service for the final stages of the war. Designers knew there would be no time for re-engineering. The Chaffee was designed to replace the M3 and M5 light tanks, which fired 37mm guns, virtually useless in the European theatre, despite some optimism in older training videos. But remember, the 37mm gun in a light tank firing APC is effective against tanks only up to 400 yards and against other armored vehicles only up to 1,200 yards. You've got to understand the capabilities and limitations of your tank and its guns before you go into battle. The Chaffee was a vast improvement over the M5, but did take some inspiration from it, using the same dependable Cadillac twin V8 engines. The armor of the Chaffee was thin to be kept light, three quarters to one and a half inches thickness. However, unlike the M5, the Chaffee's armor was significantly angled, doubling its effectiveness. Chaffee still had to be used cautiously though, the majority of German tanks and anti-tank weapons could still easily penetrate the Chaffee. We have had some spectacular successes. The Chaffee had a top speed of 35 miles per hour, or 56 kilometers an hour. It had a 110 gallon fuel tank, giving it a maximum range of 175 miles, or 280 kilometers. The Chaffee had good acceleration and handling, and the new torsion bar suspension gave the five-man crew a much smoother ride than the majority of American tanks. The Chaffee's chassis was used for several other vehicles. Aside from the good suspension, it also offered a low silhouette. You can catch an M37 howitzer motor carriage based on the Chaffee mocked up as a German assault gun in Battle of Britain. The Chaffee was armed with 230 and 150 caliber machine gun, along with a 75 mm gun. The M6 75 mm gun was originally designed to be mounted on a B-25 Mitchell bomber. This M6 had the same ballistics as the 75 mm seen on Sherman tanks, but was a successful improvement on the design, using a thinner walled barrel and a different recoil mechanism. This provided a great punch for a light tank. The gun's ammunition and ballistics are exactly the same as those of the 75mm gun in medium tanks. 
Use of this large gun in a light tank has been made possible mainly because of the new concentric recoil mechanism, which is light and takes up very little space. Besides the advanced gun, many of the small details and technical improvements made to armored vehicles during the war came together in the Chaffee to make it a great tank. Particular focus to servicing and accessibility meant the tank could be quickly repaired and kept the mechanics happy. The M24 is powered by two V-type eight-cylinder engines developing 110 horsepower each. Here they are, designed for quick and easy services. Carburetors, distributors, spark plugs and other units which require constant attention are placed within easy reach. Even simple improvements, such as spring-loaded hatches, can make the difference between life and death for a tank crew. To save time and energy, both the turret and the cupola doors are spring-loaded so they can be opened and closed easily despite their heavy weight. The Chaffee made it to the front lines to see combat at the very end of 1944. The army was slow to distribute the Chaffee, and it only saw limited combat. Though where it was used, it was frequently praised. The primary purpose of the light tank was reconnaissance, and to protect the flanks of mechanized forces. However, the Chaffee was more versatile, as its firepower enabled it to engage German medium and light tanks, and provide greater fire support. Get it! It's like hitting them with tennis balls! The bridge at Remagen, along with the Battle of the Bulge, offer the most impressive and numerous use of genuine M24 chaffies. The bridge at Remagen has a special place in history, as it's far more than a World War II story. It was a production that took place at the height of Cold War tension in Czechoslovakia. Filming took place during the Prague Spring, with citizens demanding reform in the country, contrary to Soviet influence. The film crew for the bridge at Remagen was in fact accused by the Soviet Union and East Germany of using the war movie as a cover to smuggle weapons into the country as part of a CIA plan to occupy the nation. The Soviet Union invaded Czechoslovakia in August of 1968, with the movie only two-thirds complete. Eight tanks had to be left behind, and the filming was completed in Hamburg, West Germany. Three different bridges were used in the filming, one in Czechoslovakia, one in Germany, and another in Italy. Amazingly, the Soviet Union occupation force eventually returned most of the military equipment and tanks left behind. Battle of the Bulge from 1965 is the obvious other major tank film to heavily feature the Chaffee. This is one of those films where you can either enjoy the tank action scenes or frustrate yourself for the entirety of the film for the historical inaccuracies. We will attack in staggered formation. First, Lion on the Assault, second, Panther. For filming, M24 chaffees were used in lieu of M4 Shermans. But the film has some impressive set-piece tank battles, with the Spanish army leasing dozens of tanks for the production. Playing the role of German heavy tanks, were Cold War Spanish M47 patents. The camera crews set themselves. Director Ken Anakin quickens the tempo. Tiger tanks prepare for action. 21 years ago, another arm was raised just like this. Obviously, the M47s are a bit of a stretch playing tigers, but it's still nice to see genuine tanks. The final tank battle in Battle of the Bulge is a very rough depiction of an engagement at cell. Late December of 1944, this was not a big daring battle as shown. In reality, most of the German tanks were already stranded and out of fuel at this point. With the dreaded Tiger tanks and their murderous 90mm guns leading the German infantry. In Patton from 1970, at least the Chaffee, as shown being used by the British, didn't have to go up against Cold War era tanks alone. Like Battle of the Bulge, Patton was filmed in Spain, with the majority of German armor being represented by, ironically, M48 Pattons. General Patton was at least equally armed with his own Pattons and Walker M41 Bulldogs in the film. Vamos. You 
magnificent bastard, I read your book! The British and Commonwealth were supplied with hundreds of chaffees during the war, obtained through the U.S. Lend-Lease program, but saw action mainly in northwestern Europe and the North German Plain. The chaffee was equally well liked by the British, Canadian, and Australian tankers. New features are torsion bar suspension, 75mm gun as the main armament, steel tracks and new type of all-round vision cupola. Capable of 35 miles per hour, this new tank has a low silhouette, well-sloped armor, and a roomy turret. As tradition, like the Patton tank being named after General Patton, the M24 Chaffee was named after U.S. Army General Adna R. Chaffee Jr., who helped develop the use of tanks in the U.S. Funny enough, it was the British who started this tradition with American tanks to give them easier to remember names. Tank! Is it? There's more than one of them. Ultimately, the Chaffee was a great tank in World War II, but used so limitedly it didn't make a huge impact. After World War II, it struggled greatly against T-34s in Korea, but remained in service throughout the world as a supplementary and reconnaissance tank, and did receive several creative upgrades from various nations that adopted the tank, such as the Norwegians, who created the NM-116 tank destroyer. Alright, I'm Johnny. Thanks for watching this quick brief on what was really a great tank, but introduced a bit too late in the war. Either way, it deserves some recognition. If you want to leave any further info on the subject, please do so in the comment section, and we'll see you next time.